Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Rusty Muffin Top. Uh, you know, to start off, you're going to probably wonder how they came up with the word muffin top. You know, everybody's coming up with these crazy names for, uh, for grovelers. If you think about the shape of a muffin top, obviously the, the muffin itself is round when you look down on top of it, and then it has like a flat surface at the top, and then it has like kind of a, that crown almost like a crown molding around the muffin top. It's making you hungry right now, isn't it? But that's, you think about it, it's round, like looking from the top, and then it's got like that slight flat, maybe just a little bit of curve to the top, and then it edges off to that nice muffin top edge that goes around the top. If you look at the muffin, the muffin's top right here, it actually looks like a muffin top, and that's actually what we're gonna talk about a lot in this board is one, how flat the deck is, and then also, the way that they take the volume out of the rail right here with this angular rail. So you've got a really flat deck all the way across, and it's like from the tail all the way up, the, the, the deck is virtually close to dead flat. But then you get to about right here where my fingertips are, and then it pulls the volume out real quickly. And so that's called an angular rail right there. What that does is it gives you a real stable platform for paddling, uh, so you're like you're not feeling like you're going to roll off the board. Uh, it also makes the board really stable when you have a flat deck like that because you have volume out closer to the rails to to stabilize the board when you stand up on it, uh, which is good for a bunch of different things. If you're if you're trying to improve your skills, the stability is great. If you stand up in the wrong place on the board, if you stand up too far to the right or left of the stringer, uh, that's going to make the board more stable and allow you to correct your stance. Uh, it also just makes everything more confident if you're at a higher ability level. The bad thing about flat decks is if you run that volume all the way to the rail and just end up with this huge boxy rail, that's great for small waves and going really slow, but then as soon as you get going really fast, the rail's not going to be able to get buried into the water. Uh, and these boards can create a lot of speed when you combine a wider, more parallel outline with a big tail block and a flatter rocker and concaves. Like all this board wants to do is go really, really fast. So you want to have a way to be able to turn with that speed or bleed off speed. So uh, bringing the rail down dramatically, like in, that, in the last couple of inches right here, or last inch and a half, couple inches, to a much thinner rail here, as well as the tail is a lot thinner. Both of those um, allow you to take a board that you wouldn't think you'd be able to turn at that type of speed and then actually drive it really hard uh, through that turn. So really flat deck makes it stable, makes it a great paddler, and then also pulling that volume out of the rails to not have it be so extreme in that flat deck uh, direction. This board, um, I'd say the closest thing that this board is to a board that you may be familiar with, having uh, surfed a lot of boards that come through here um, in, in the Graveler category would be the Lost Plank. So looking at both the boards, if you were to pull up images of both of those boards online and go side by side, they'd look almost identical to like, you know, as far as like a JPEG computer image of the board. In real life, what you're going to see that's different is uh, that the muffin top has a significantly flatter deck like we just talked about. It has that angular rail um, all the way around the board as well, even like a little beak in the nose. So that angle keeps going all the way around just like it does on the top of a muffin. Uh, the muffin top also has a flatter rocker. Plank had a bit more nose kick. And the, uh, and the muffin top also has, it has the, the V or the roll in the nose, but then it goes to a shallow single, shallow double, and then V out the tail, where the plank was just a roll bottom the whole length of the board, or a V bottom the whole length of the board. All of those changes make this board easier to paddle, easier to catch waves. Literally to the point that if you miss a wave, you could paddle over the back of it and catch it. Um, also, faster right out of the takeoff. Uh, that, that concave bottom helps the board get up on top of the water and, and be a lot faster, being on top of the water rather than in the water. So that takeoff speed's a lot faster, and the ability to build speed is a lot faster. But the other thing that you notice is that the, when you have a flat deck, it brings more of the volume out towards the rail, but not to the rail. So we talked about like, you don't want to have your rail be too thick. It brings it out to about, if this is the center line here on the stringer, brings it out to about here. So, you know, probably about a third of the way out. And having, the, having that volume right here, what that does is when you're, whether you're going front side or back side, when you push into your turn, it gives you more push back, more spring back out of the, out of the turn, and more drive or squirt out of the turn down the line. And 
having that flat deck, having all that paddle power, that speed that you're, that paddle speed, you're gonna be getting into the wave with that much speed, but then having the ability to push off of that rail and have something that's gonna push back on you makes the board really lively uh, in the turns. And then also for connecting sections that you couldn't make on other boards that didn't have that, uh, that much drive down the line. And that's a, I think that's a big thing that's unique about this board if you don't get a chance to see it in person. Like again, just looking at pictures of it online or seeing it in a, in a magazine, like in a, um, like in a board form, you're not really gonna be able to see the deck shape. But having it, that be flat and having that extra volume right along this line right here, like almost like where that wax line is, just gives you that extra push out of the, out of the turns. And with a more dome deck, in order to get that much volume here, the board's gonna have to be significantly thicker here, which is unfortunately gonna make the board too floaty for what you wanna have it. So going with a flat deck, it gives you the confidence and the paddling and the ability to stand anywhere on it, width-wise and also uh, length-wise, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But it has the rail, gives the right amount of rail foam that's gonna give you that good drive and squirt out of the turns. The other thing we wanna talk about as far as being able to stand anywhere is there's a lot of different grovelers that have a locked in stance position as well as like an open sweet spot where you can stand anywhere. So for example, the Lost Lazy Boy, you can stand anywhere on the board. And a lot of people like that in that uh, they either wanna do it for functional purposes of how they wanna ride the wave or how they wanna style out on the board. Um, or for mistake purposes, being able to stand anywhere on the board where a lost puddle jumper is more locked in on the pad, you're riding it more from one position on the board. This board is, the muffin top is more along the lines of an open sweet spot. So you can see we chose not to put a pad on this board where most of the boards we're riding, we are putting pads on. And the reason is, is you could literally ride this board from here all the way to the leash plug. And, and ride it effectively. And so again, like if you stand up in the wrong place or if you stand up with your legs too close together, it'll still work and it'll still glide. You'll still be able, be able to pump some speed. Uh, but also from a functionality standpoint, if you're coming off of a long board and you're used to riding in different places on the board, this board will be more open to that style, uh, what like a high line trimming style than something that rode more locked in where you're always having to make speed by turning the board. This board will work both actively maneuvering it as well as if you're just locked in a certain trim position and literally anywhere on the board and, um, and riding it from one, one fixed location. Uh, as far as wave range, we, we got a chance, when we got this board, uh, it was actually the reverse of a, most new, new board scenarios for people. Normally when you get a brand new board, the ocean goes flat. When we got this board, we were in the middle of a 10-day high surf advisory, so we had to actually look for small breaks in order to surf it. And it was actually a cool experience because we were able to search out little nooks and crannies and go to a lot of breaks that normally don't ever break and, and, and get them lined up small and actually pretty perfect for small waves, for here anyway, and, uh, and got to ride this board in, in some sand, uh, almost sand point breaks, you know, in the range that were like kind of down here to maybe here, that size, as well as uh, some crumbly pier breaks that were anywhere from like, you know, thigh high to chest, but not punchy, not like our normal Cape Hatteras tubing wave, but just sort of crumbly and, and mushy and, and a lot of sections. And the board worked really well um, in all those conditions. The, it's really noticeable. You can feel the drive in this board, uh, you know, from the foam distribution and then also from the, from the quad fin setup that we, that we chose to ride on it. Uh, really easy to make sections if the wave's sectioning out. A lot of speed down the line. Uh, a lot of wave catching ability too. The paddle, the paddle power of this board is impressive and the ability to get into it early and then start pumping good speed right off the drop. It really helps you make sections and then also have the ability to turn some unmakeable ones into places where you could do some good wraps um, on the wave. So, you know, in riding it in the small waves, it worked great. Both pumping it off the tail, but also, you know, a lot of times in, in the smaller stuff, you can get a foot up on the nose and get barreled with like a foot up here and stuff. It's, it's, a, cool, it's a cool board to, uh, to surf, like kind of bouncing, board, bouncing back and forth between the different styles. The other thing that we got to find out is, um, is the sizing of it. So we talked about how this board has more foam of its total foam positioned closer to the rail, but not right on the rail. We found also that in doing that, it, it makes you not have to ride the board as big as what you would think 
uh, for your normal gravel board. So the number that's out there that's like commonly agreed upon for like if you want like a true gravel board that's really going to work, especially with these like you know wider, fatter designs, shorter and fatter designs, is a lot of people are going 10 to 20 percent bigger. So they're going 10 to 10 percent if they want to still retain a lot of the maneuverability, like the top end maneuverability, and they're going 20 percent if they just want to kill their lawn board and never ride it again. Uh, with this board, because the, the deck is so flat and because you've got all that extra powerful foam right along this finger line right here where the wax ends, it, it translates into not having to upsize the board as much. So uh, to give you an example, like typically my, my daily boards or my short boards are going to be like 38, 39 liters, where this board, uh, you know, if I wanted to ride it like as a performance gravel, I'd probably ride it like 40 and change, where normally 40 and change doesn't really feel like it has enough power, like I can ride it in decent waves, but not like gravel waves. Uh, because that extra foam is out there on the rail, it gives you that much more to push against uh, in the turns. And then if you take it to the next level, if you take it to that 10, 12, 15% level more, and that ends up only being like 5% more. So if you go like 38, 39, up to 40 and change, that's like 5% more. If you go 10 to 15% more, then it's putting it closer to like 43, 43 and change. And then at that size, you get a board that just magic carpet glides uh, across the water and is super easy to surf and, and really fun to surf. And you, if you have an hour to surf, you get the maximum number of waves in an hour and still good, good maneuverability. Not as snappy as the one size down, but still a super fun board to surf. And one, uh, if you're looking for that style of board, it should definitely be something that you're looking at. Uh, on the flip side of it, you know, everybody looks at this board for small waves, but on the flip side of it, Rusty uh, says, you know, hey, this is a great board for when it's, when it's small and mushy and blown out and junk surf, uh, but it's also going to serve, you know, in the catalog they write, it's also going to serve you well when the surf cleans up, you know, but you look at this board, you're like, why would I ever surf this board when, uh, when the waves are good? The thing, uh, and actually just yesterday, we had a really good swell. We've had a little bit of a drought and we've been riding only boards like this for a while, but yesterday the wind finally went offshore and we were able to surf, you know, better, bigger, more powerful waves all day long on, on conventional daily boards or step ups. And at the end of the day, after surfing like six, seven hours, it was like one more hour of light. And we went out to the outside bar, same break, and uh, would have been like the last wave in the world that you would have surfed a board like this on. And, and it was, you know, head high, some bigger sets and, uh, you know, not tubing at any, at any point, but just, you know, but clean and breaking crumbly and, and there'd be some like kind of unbreaking sections. And if you had the right board, you could connect it all the way to the beach from way outside. And uh, this thing was just an absolute riot uh, because you had the ability to just turn the thing anywhere and connect sections that you would have, connect sections with speed that with any other board, you just would have been like, this wave's over, I'm gonna cut out and go get another one. Where this thing, you would just keep going at full speed and just connect the thing all the way to the dry sand on every wave. So it was a, uh, an eye opener as far as like what you can do with the design. A lot of that comes from how, even though it's wide and flat, uh, bringing the rail down. So you still have that bite on the rail. So when you're still, when you're going really fast, uh, at that point, way faster than most people would surf this board, the rail's still going to hold, uh, still going to hold in. So it, it, that's, that was a, uh, you know, it was just like a fun thing to see. And, you know, a lot of times when you're just totally surfed out and you just want something easy, easy to surf and a different feeling for like that third or fourth session, it's a fun, fun thing to go to. Uh, for fins, uh, it's got a, this board has a wide tail. Uh, it's got a big tail block back here. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't under fin it because the, the amount of fin that's going to work on this board is proportioned to the width of the tail. So uh, we, went, uh, we went with the FCS2 performers. Uh, I'm like 215 pounds, so normally I ride larges. On this board, I rode extra larges, and uh, so extra large fronts, and then the performer large rears. And these large rear fins for the performer series are, are pretty big fins. Um, and I'm, I'm only using them on these really big tail block boards. But this fin combo worked really well for the drive uh, down the line, also had good release and you know, just a good all around fin set. I also did use it with uh, the Performer Extra Large Tri-Fin, which worked good. Uh, I, I preferred the quad on this board just because of the width of the tail, but I did have some fun waves on the, on the Tri-Fin as well for those of you that want to try it out. And then another fin set that I really liked uh, 
was the new split keels that FCS2 is making. And that's a Mayhem design fin, really similar to his future Seaworthy design. And uh, that fin is really popular and, and has done really well for people that had futures boxes. But then when there was really no FCS equivalent to that fin, and there is now, and that fin worked really well on this board. Uh, the drivey front fin was a good match like with the overall design of this board. And then it has a really high aspect, narrow, pivotal fin for the trailers, which really allow it to release off the top. So it's the rusty muffin top. Great board uh, to add to your grovel quiver. And it's, uh, you know, also keep your, uh, keep your mind open to what you can ride it in, you know, outside of grovel. Cause it, it's just a, uh, it's a blast. It adds a lot of fun to your session. Really easy board to surf uh, well and to get tuned into. And it's, uh, it's a blast. There's really nothing, el nothing else like it, especially when you get one underneath your hand and you start feeling the rails and looking at the uh, bottom shape and then, and then surfing it in the water. If you have any questions about the Rusty Muffin Top, you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or you can check us out online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.